All right. So in this video, what are we going to do? Actually, this is a live stream. And this live stream, what are we going to do is that list live stream is divided into two parts. All right, the first part, I'm gonna be talking about frequency separation. We're gonna learn frequency separation and in between you can have your questions, you can uh, ask anything you want about frequency separation. And in the second part of the video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open questions for everything. You can ask anything about Photoshop. So we'll just wait for a couple of people to join in and after that, we'll start straight away so uh, a couple of questions that I'll answer right now uh, about uh, a few things that people have asked me in Facebook and uh, Twitter a lot of places so the first question was by Alicia the question Alicia asked was that uh, when I transfer files from Illustrator to Photoshop the files tend to be blurry Alicia all you need to do when you're an illustrator just select the file select the object control C or command C if you're using a Mac, come back to Photoshop, command V. Now there are a lot of options that appear. In those options, make sure you check smart object and then click OK. And that way, no matter how big or small you make the object, the object will stay intact. It won't lose any details. All right, so let's get into it. Hi, hi Dave, hi Anand, hi Reynaldo, hi David Sunil Kumar, hi Meldrum, hi David again. So. Great to see you guys. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so today we're gonna do frequency separation. So what about frequency? Yes, guys, a quick tip. If you wanna change the background color, just right click on it, change to whatever color you want. Now, pro tip, do you know why I turn it white? Do you know why? Because if you turn it white, when you upload photos online, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, the background is white, right? And when the background is white, do you wanna see uh, how your photo is going to look when the background is white. So I turn it white sometimes because YouTube thumbnails and stuff are on white backgrounds. All right, hi Javed, hi Reynaldo, hi AKA, AKA, why do you always call me Shahrukh Khan? Hi Studip, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. All right, so uh, let's begin. Guys, if you have any questions, make sure you ask them down in the comments, all right. so. The first thing that you need to do in frequency separation, let us understand frequency separation from the very beginning. What is frequency separation and what is it used for? So frequency separation is used for smoothening the skin. Watch this, listen to this carefully. Smoothening the skin without losing any texture. Okay, getting the idea. Smoothening the skin without losing any texture. Now, when you smoothen the skin, most of you guys have used the beauty mode in iPhones and smartphones. There's a beauty mode there. And when you use the beauty mode, what it does is that it, it smoothens the skin, but it looks, uh, it makes you look like a wax statue. It, it's so unrealistic. So the realistic way, that's the difference, difference that we have Photoshop for to give you class, to give you professional feeling. So what it does is that it loses texture. Now you don't want to lose texture, at the same time, you want to smoothen the skin. Now this might sound contradictory and counterintuitive, but this is gonna be really fun. So to do that, first up what you need to do, you need to separate the skin into details and color. Now, what are the details? Details are the wrinkles, details is the texture. What is the color? The rashes that uh, th that's there, the uneven color tones that are there, the these things, I don't know what are they called, but beneath the eye there are blackish things that are there. So to remove that, you need to edit the color. To remove the wrinkles, you need to edit the details layer. So let us first do that. So make sure whatever you're doing, make sure you make a copy of the background layer so that you are on the safe side. Now, make one more copy of it. Okay, name this one, color. Okay, These sto this stores color information and name this one, details. Okay, done, all right. Now what you need to do, turn off the, no, just no turn off, <laughs> just turn off, yes, turn off the details layer, I just confused in the middle. All right, when you, the colors layer is selected, all you need to do, you need to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now, let's zoom in quite a bit. Okay, let's zoom in quite a bit. Now, guys, is the audio all right? Is the video all right? Let me know down in the comments below, okay. Decrease the radius to 0.1, the least number it can go. Now increase it gradually, slowly and slowly, okay? Slowly and slowly increase it, up until the point where every wrinkle is gone. Just stop just at the point where the wrinkles are gone. All right, so just increase it, yeah, yes. 
2.8 is good. At 2.8, every wrinkle is gone. Just stop at the point. We might have to take it a little further. These wrinkles are still there. Yeah, this is, four, this is good. 4.4 is good. Click OK. Don't go overboard. Just stop at the point where the wrinkles go away. 4.4 is really fine. All right, click OK. Hi, Amritpal. Hi, Georgine Harkness. Great to see you. Hi, Vishwa Adhikari. Hello, bro. Hello from Nepal. Awesome. We are, um, what do you call it? Neighbors. Okay. Uh, Meldram Kursam asks, why Camera Raw is not enabled in CMYK but enabled in RGB? Guys, here's the thing. When we take digital photographs, it's in RGB because light is in RGB. The print is CMYK. Light is additive. Print is subtractive. And this can go a little bit uh, uh, theory side, but here's the thing. When you see white light, you can divide white light into R, G, and B. You cannot do it in CMYK. So that's the reason why camera captures in RGB. But when you print it, it has to be converted into CMYK. All right, there's a video about it. If you, if you, uh, to get your concepts cleared, there's a video about RGB versus CMYK in the same channel. Make sure you watch that. Your concepts will be clear. All right. Hi, Amritpal. Hi, Salim. Great to see you guys there. Now, the details layer. Turn on the details layer. Turned on. Now, go to image, apply image. Now, now what are we trying to do here? Now, this is this was a normal layer, right? The normal layer of the lady. Oh, by the way, this image was submitted by Andres Vargas. And a big shout out to him for submitting this image for letting me use this in my tutorials. Okay. So what are we trying to do with this image? So this was a normal image, right? And we are trying to remove every color information from it so that it just retains the details. For example, uh, just for instance, so this color layer, what does this have? This doesn't have any details. This has color. Okay. Now, what if we subtract the color layer from the details layer? What, what will we have? What will we have? The details, right? So, in the layer, select color. We want to subtract color from this layer. Okay. And in the channel, select RGB, make sure RGB is selected. And in the blending, select what? Guess what? Subtract. Hi, Jason. Hi from UK, give it up. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that international audience are, uh, is watching this. All right, uh, hey Jason, let me know whether, how my English is because I'm making a lot of mistakes today. Okay, so I've been practicing English for quite a while, but uh, okay, I, I, forgive me for that. All right, so uh, subtract, make sure the scale is two and the offset is 128. Click okay. Okay. Uh, Amritpal use how to smartly use curves. Guys, Amritpal, there's a video about using curves in Photoshop and using curves in Photoshop is really simple. Check out that video. Okay, now the details layer, change the blend mode to, I'm just forgetting. Okay, guys, you might not be able to see what the blend mode I'm selecting. I'm just saying you because my face is there and uh, the blend mode would be linear light. Now watch. Let, let's make a group of the details and the color. So press and hold controller command and select the other one and press control G and these two will be grouped. Now, if I just turn off this, surprise, we're getting the same thing. If I just turn it on, there's, a, there's no difference between this group and the background and the original image. It's the same thing. You know why? Because this proves that these two images combine to form this image. Isn't that interesting? Let's just turn it off. If I turn the color layer off, what do we have? We have the details. If I turn the details layer off, what do we have? Colors. Okay, up until now, everything clear? Do you have any questions? Make sure you ask them right now, okay? Questions, questions, guys, till then, till then let me say hi to everyone. Hi, hi, Ken Taylor, hi from California, great. Awesome, Ken. Uh, David Piroli, your English is terrible. Thank you so much, David, I feel really good. Hi, Mani Ratnam, I am in, uh, I couldn't understand. Hitesh, uh, here. Your English is, wow, thank you so much, Hitesh. Hi, Arsh. Great to see you guys. Great to see you guys. Yesterday when I had a live stream, not a lot of people were there. Okay, now, where were we? Just remind me where were we. Now, now these two things are divided. Now it's time for us to edit them separately. So the first thing we are going to do as there's a lot of blotchiness in the face, we are going to remove those blotchiness. Now, blotchiness are the part of color or details? Let me know. Color or details, what is, the, what, what is blotchiness part of? It's a part of color, right? It's not a part of details, right? So 
we will edit the color layer. So <laughs> to edit the color layer, simply, we just have to blur it out. This selected area is not everything. Okay, select the lasso tool. Right click on it, select the lasso tool. All right, make sure the feather is considerably high, 15 or 20 or 10, whatever. And select the areas that you want to smooth. For example, this area. So select this area. There you go. At this point of time, I would say that if you had a graphic tablet, then awesome. Now, this gives you a feather of 15. Press Q to see how smooth the feather is. Now, the areas that are normal are the areas that are selected, the areas that are red are the areas that are not selected, and there's a transition. Now, if this, not, if this is not smooth enough, you might have to increase the feather. But in my case, 15 is good enough. So I'll press Q again, it returns into a selection, okay? Now, okay, let's take a couple of questions. How to make good selection of the skin so it can blend well? Blend well with what? I, I quite didn't understand your question. Uh, what do you mean by blend well with what? Uh, I'm so sorry I couldn't get. Uh, hello Pix, I want to ask about when you zoom in, you have seen match plus red tone. How can I fix it? Uh, I want to ask about when you zoom in, you to see match red plus skin tone. Hey, uh, I'll get back to you. I couldn't understand your question. I, if you can uh, explain your question a little bit, I can understand that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try my level best to you. I'll get back to you, surely. Please don't be disheartened about it. Um, again, let me try reading this. Guys, if you can explain the, the, his question to me, it would be so awesome. Hi, Magic X from Germany, Berlin. Awesome. Hi, greetings from Belgium. Awesome. A lot of people there. Is Photoshop illegal? No, it is not. But if you are using an illegal version, it is, of course. All right, but do not get caught. <laughs> so, so go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now watch, watch, nothing happens. <laughs> Let's zoom in quite a bit. Now increase the blur to a point where these uh, blotchiness goes away. So it's going away, increase a little bit. It's going away, it's going away. Increase it a little bit. Increase it a little bit. Yeah, it's gone completely, but it's too much. It's looking like some cartoon, uh, some 3D cartoon with Disney Disney special effects. But that's uh, besides the point. I guess uh, 15 is fine. 15, 16. Let's keep it 16. That's pretty good. Awesome, isn't it? Now, let's look at the before and after really quickly. So, this is the before. This is the after. Now, watch. We still have the details. There. We still have the details. But... It's gone. Now all you need to do, you need to replicate this in all the other parts of the face. Suppose we are removing in this area. So we will select this area. And this time, surprise, you don't have to go to filter Gaussian blur. You can use the shortcut. If you're using any version after CC 2015.5, the shortcut is Control Alt F. And if you're using any version before CC 2015.5, it's Control F. I don't know why Photoshop did that mistake, but I have changed it to, uh, changed it to Control F. Okay, so you can change shortcuts. You, you should know that. Control F, it makes it smooth. There you go. All you need to do, you need to replicate it again and again. Control F. There you go. Don't go near the edges. Let me show you something. You should not go near the edges. This is the wrong way to do it. Watch. Watch what happens. It completely flattens out thing. You should not do that, okay? Okay. Pennsylvania, Sohammer, great to see you. Hassan, Hassan Jama from Norway, great to see you, Hassan. Uh, Cause Gallery from Ghana. Oh, amazing, isn't it? Okay, so uh, replicate it here. We'll do this. Guys, if you have any questions, ask me. I'm sitting here for your questions. Otherwise, I would have made a video about it. I'm really thrilled about this live stream, okay? All right, let's replicate it. Keep on replicating it. Okay, Arsh asks, Hi, Mesh, I have a question, but I'm confused what to ask first. Ask anything. Shoot. All right, we're going to replicate it. And I know it's boring, but that's okay. Photoshop is interesting if you do it. It's just like cricket. If you're batting, it's fine. But if you're watching the sports, it's kind of boring. But some people find it interesting to watch stuff going on, happening on. And you should not. Actually, I don't know what I'm speaking. <laughs> it's just going off my mind. All right. Hi, Rakeev. I'm from Bangladesh. Yaar. Milke bahut laga. All right. 
Control D. Yes. When you make a selection, then you smoothen it. Control F, Control D to make the selection go away. That's an important thing a lot of people miss and uh, scratch their brains about. All right, so Control D, Control F. Here too. There you go, Control F. Good, amazing. Guys, say a hi to me. I need to know. You skipped my question. Please read it. Uh, where did your question go? I'm so sorry. Uh, let me just have a look. How to lighten edges of a subject to blend in with the background perfectly as both are from the same shots. How to lighten edges of a subject to blend in with the background uh, perfectly as both are on the same shots. Here, here's the thing. Select the edge. Okay, Maria, just a short answer. Select the edge. And then once the edge is selected, guys, uh, it, it would be very much better if you can ask me all the Photoshop, everything Photoshop related question after I finish with the frequency separation right now. Please make sure you ask the frequency se uh, separation question, but that's, it. you guys are my friends. That's 100% fine. I just, let me rephrase that. That's totally fine if you guys ask any question. I'm not gonna punish you, I'm not your teacher. Okay, so. Uh, the thing is, money. what you need to do, you need to make a selection, okay? Create a new layer. The selection is still intact. Create a new layer, take a brush, select a light color which matches to the edge, and then change the blend mode to soft light or try overlay or try screen, and then paint in the edges. That way the edges are confined and you will not paint outside. See if that helps, okay? I need to actually look at the image. Look at the image. All right, so let me see whether the other parts are left. So we are done with the forehead. There you go. Forehead, the cheeks, awesome. Hey, Hassan asked, which audio set up do you use? I'm using the Samsung CO1U Pro. Samsung, S-A-M-S-O-N, not G, C-O-1-U Pro. So that's what I'm using. And uh, this is the Audio-Technica M30X, Control F. There you go, we have, uh, is there any place left? Maybe a little bit near the nose, but that's okay. For frequency separation, did you apply, did you use apply image? Yes, Craig, if you go back to the live stream, you can, yes, you can go back, I've enabled it, I think. Uh, you, you would see that I have applied the live, uh, apply image there. Okay, is there any question? Which audio, okay, how to fix red skin? Curves, curves, the best way to do it. Curves, watch the video, using curves in Photoshop. Use the curves, what do you need to do? Okay, just let me show you. Uh, Stu dip stu de toe. Okay, let me show you how to use curves to fix red skins. For example, for example, suppose she had red skin and I wanted to decrease it. What I would do, I could I would go to this adjustment layer and go to curves and then go to my red channel. Okay, then click on this icon, click on where the red ishness is and then just decrease it. There you go, the reddishness is gone. Just look at the before and after. This is the before, this is the after. Gone! Isn't that amazing? Now, you can always select the skin uh, using the mask as to which areas do you want to decrease red, but that's basically the idea. Okay, so let's let's go come back to frequency separation. So, let's come back to color. There you go. I know I'm taking usually a lot more time than I usually take just to answer you guys' questions that you might have and just track this live stream a little longer. Okay. There you go. You can go as detailed as possible. Again, I'm gonna reiterate, don't spill over the eyebrows. If you do that, what's gonna happen is gonna mess up, muck up, muck with an M. Okay, so uh, there you go, it's, it's good. Awesome, anything left? Great, okay. Guys, how's it looking? Studipto, you're very welcome. Just make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. <laughs> All right, we are, I, think we, I, I think I'm overdoing it right now. But you're pretty much done, isn't it? Amazing. Now, let's look at the before and after really quickly. So this is the before. The guys, if you have any questions regarding frequency separation, ask it right now. Ken asks, is there a way to get real tight selections with real tight sections with frequency separation? The lasso tool is your friend, my friend. 
real tight sections with frequency separation. Also, there are other ways called this one. The quick selection tool is also your friend, my friend. So these are the few things that you can do. Also, there's also one more thing called the quick selection tool. So if you press Q and then there you go, you make a rough selection, you make any rough selection, then you press Q and then you can use your all kinds of brushes and to refine it. Okay, so there are a lot of ways of doing it. So quick selection number one. Number two, uh, this one, what it's called? Uh, quick selection tool number one. This is on quick quick mask uh, section, the quick mask feature. Okay, number two. So these are the few sections. Okay, when it comes to frequency separation, uh, it's quite limited. But here's the thing. But when it comes to general selection, there are a lot of plethora of ways of doing so. Okay. Uh, okay, a lot of questions right now. <laughs> okay, just uh, where was I? Ken. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna. Okay, you are the. I'm not the king, guys. I'm not the king. Uh, how collaborator you camera, PC, screen? Hey, it's all using the OBS, okay? Open broadcasting software. Look them up on Google and you can also do that like anybody else. Okay, when creating details layer, any difference between apply image, subtract versus high pass filter? Great question. Great, really great question. At the beginning, I used to do with high pass filter. Okay, I used to do with high pass filter, but here's the thing. This gives you accurate result. You know why? Because in this, you go the opposite. You first remove the wrinkles, okay? You just remove the wrinkles. In high pass, first you enhance it, and then you remove it. Here the opposite goes. Here you first remove it using the blurring, and then extract the detail layer. Now here's the uh, advantage of using this method. The advantage is, that biggest advantage is when you remember when we divided these two images, right? These two images combined looked the same as the background image. So this gives you a much more accurate result than that one. But we are going to come to that also. Now, uh, this look, let's look at the other questions. Um, is it possible to remove bags under eyes using frequency separation techniques? Of course, that's what I recently did. That's what I just now did. So, if you just zoom in, I don't know what just happened there. Okay, oh, all right. Now, if you zoom in and if you select, that's what I did right now. So if you zoom in, control F, it removes the bags. And here's the thing, the other ways of doing it is using dodging and burning. There's a tutorial about dodging and burning in the same channel, go ahead and check it out. It's about relightening. Okay, so, um, hi from Turkey, great to see you. Okay, so a couple of questions. Nope. Are you just showing us frequencies of some other stuff today? Yes. Uh, not actually showing you some other stuff. I'm going to answer all of your questions after doing frequency separation. Okay, hey, have hey have skipped my question. What was your question? Please could you repeat because there's a lot of questions right here. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, excuse me, can you tell us what time does start live tutorial? Mm, there's not a perfect time. Maybe I, I notify you in my Facebook page, okay? I'll notify you if you follow me there. Okay, so the thing is done. Now here's the thing. Hey there, I want to speak English like you. You can speak much better than me. The only thing to do is to listen to listen to things that interest you and you'll be rocking the stage. Okay, so before or after, you're pretty much done. But here's the problem. The problem is the skin is not textured enough. The skin is not looking that much nice. It has lost a little bit of texture. We want to bring a little more texture back, even though there was not a lot of a lot of texture there, but we want to increase the texture. So make a copy of the details layer. There you go. You have more texture, but this is too much. Decrease the opacity to 48 around-ish. That's pretty okay. How much texture do you want? Just increase the details to that one. Maybe 45 is good. All right, now this is looking nice. Now, you don't want the details on every area, so you might want to create a negative mask. Press and hold Ultra Option and click on this. This creates a negative mask and just take the brush and make sure white is in the foreground color. Press X to toggle between foreground and the background. And guys, here's a tip. If you are on a random color, say if you're in green and black and something like that, if you guys, okay, okay, let's just, let's just come back to this. If you're on a random color, say anything like bluish. Now, if you want to go back to black and white, press D. It just goes back, press X, select the mask, and just paint over the areas that you want details in. 
So there you go. You know, I wanted the details in these areas. I wanted the details in these areas. Um, okay. A couple of questions. Let me take a few questions right here. That what I'm waiting, w waiting, burning, and dodging. What what I'm watching? This is frequency separation. How about texture? Right, Th that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, thanks, Manny. You're very welcome. I have a problem of oil paint filter while using Photoshop. I also have uh, an oil paint filter. I also used to have an oil paint filter. This is maybe because your graphics processor does not support it. So it uses graphic intensive stuff. That's kind of technical. But yes, you need to uh, upgrade your graphics processor. If you cannot do it, upgrade your laptop or computer. So that's a hardware fault. Okay, or maybe you need to update. Okay, that might help. Retouch a portrait, what's your prefer to do first? Burning and dodging or frequency separation? That's a really nice question. Well, you should probably do frequency separation. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Because actually the thing is when you, whenever you're retouching a portrait, you move from the structure to the outside. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's look, at a, let's look at making a statue. Now, when you make a statue, you make the wireframe first, okay? You make the bones first, and then you add clay to it, right? So in the similar manner, you set the bone first, you set the structure first, then you dodge and burn, you do whatever, add filters, whatever, okay? So that's the way to do it, okay? Okay, what about texture from add noise emboss? That's also a good idea. Okay, so this is how we have added texture. Now we are going to treat the wrinkles, okay? So, to treat the wrinkles, let's flatten these two details layers. Select these two and press Control E. And now again, when you flatten less, the most, uh, what's going to happen is that uh, it's going to disregard the blending mode. So again, you need to go to this one and change it to linear light. Now here's the thing, guys, if you don't want texture, you don't need to do the duplicate process and all over again, all that stuff, okay? Hi, 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 Fritesh, hi, Fritesh. Great to see you here. I remember you from the YouTube creator. No, YouTube space. I'm so sorry, my memory is, uh, I'm, I'm a gajni. All right, so make sure the details layer is selected. Now what you need to do, you need to go to the spot healing brush tool, okay? Select the spot healing brush tool, and just paint over the wrinkle. There you go. But I don't know what it, what that is doing. What is that doing? What is that doing? I don't know. What the heck? Let's try the patch tool. Yeah, uh, I I don't know what was wrong with that. I just I really don't know what's wrong with this one. Spot healing brush tool. You're failing me, guys. So, guys, can you tell me what's wrong with that one? Till then, we'll use the patch tool. Okay, to use the patch tool, it's simple. Make sure your, uh, your patch tool is selected, and then select the wrinkle area, and replace it with the area that you wanna replace it with, okay? And I still cannot figure out why, that, why that's not working. I'll, I'll surely figure out soon. Now, this is how you remove the wrinkles. Let's try the healing brush tool. I don't know what was wrong with that. Okay, let's take a sample. Maybe it was taking a wrong sample. Maybe that could have been the possibility. Okay, make sh um, that means spot healing tool brush tool doesn't work. Maybe. Healing brush tool, take this as a sample. Press and hold alt. Take this as a sample. Paint over this. No, healing brush tool is also not working. I really don't know why. The mode is okay. The source is okay. The sample is it's all okay. Align diffusion is all okay. I cannot figure out why it's not working. Maybe I need to reset that. Yes. Whenever a tool does not work and kind of shows something strange, all you can do is you can go to this one, and you can select this one, and there's a reset tool preset. Okay. Replace tool preset with the default preset. Okay. Now let's see whether it's working or not. Take sample. No, it's not working. I don't know what's happening with this. Maybe. Oh, oh, here is the fault. I got it. I got it. Sample all layers. Current layer. Current layer. <laughs> that was such a glitch. Okay. Thanks, Native Doll. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for answering that. Sometimes I make mistakes. And just forgive me on that, guys. Please forgive me on that. Okay. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much again. Now, let us try that. 
again, and I'm sure this will work right now. Mm, okay, I need to just check this out. Okay, and now it's working. Now it's working really fine. Thanks again, Native Doll. Thanks a lot. Let me know where, where are you from. Okay. There you go. There you go. This is how you remove the wrinkles. Guys, can you see other wrinkles here? Just let me know. There are other wrinkles that you need to remove that you can remove. There you go. Guys, in a few minutes, I'll be done with frequency separation and I'll open questions to anything in Photoshop. So make sure you keep your questions ready so that I can answer them really quickly, okay? I have all sorts of images, so don't worry about what kind of questions are you going to ask. We have removed most of the wrinkles. We can try this one. Okay, now when the spot healing brush tool doesn't work, you can use the healing brush tool or the patch tool. The patch tool is my favorite. It does take time, but it's really good, okay? Okay, there you go. You can go on and on and on and on. You can go hours and hours doing this, but that's basically pretty much frequency separation. Hope you got a zest of it, and that's giving a very nice, beautiful face. Thanks again, Andrus Vargas. See his name here, Andrus Vargas. Please follow him on Instagram. His username is Yopera. Okay, so this is the before, this is the after. So we have done frequency separation. Guys, if you have any question, make sure you ask them right now about frequency separation, about anything in Photoshop. Do it. Okay, so, uh, Stutipto asks, how did you learn using Photoshop? Did you learn it alone via videos or you have some courses? Are you also interested in photography? Man, I'm so interested in photography. And uh, it's been a year or a half since, I've, since I bought my first DSLR. I know that's not a lot of time, but yes, I got so engrossed into it and so fell in love with it that I cannot look back. Okay, about Photoshop? Man, <laughs> I still remember it was 2004 or 2005 that my dad bought a new computer and it came pre-installed with Photoshop 6 something. Photoshop 6 or some older version was there. And I played it like a game. I was just addicted to Photoshop. I used to change faces and do all the crazy amateur stuff that <laughs> that you, I, I used to have fun with. And then that's how I learned Photoshop. Okay, something like this happened to me also many times. <laughs> It's this glitch usually. Thank you again. What was her name? I forgot. Native Doll. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Make a detailed video about color grading and color correction. I have a little bit about a uh, little bit video about color correction uh, in my uh, tutorial about whitening eyes. Go ahead and check it out. Okay, a little bit, and I'll make a detailed video about it. You're silly. Yes, I am definitely. I want to do a texture from Add Noise and Emboss. Yes, you can use texture from add noise, but what's gonna happen is here's the thing ABD I cannot even see an ABD L Salam. Here's the thing you can use the uh, add noise and emboss You can use go to filter. Are you talking about filter noise add noise? You can add texture that way, but that's not gonna add real texture That's gonna add artificial texture if you're talking about something else make it specific because um I'm not either I don't know about it I, or I need to learn about it. That's a great thing. I'll search about it uh, after this live stream. Thank you. I'm always a learner also. I'm more of a learner than a teacher. Okay, so which type of Photoshop you use to do skin color tone? Which type of Photoshop? I use Photoshop CC 2017. Okay, now, right now. Okay, which type of Photoshop do you use skin color tone? Curves. If you are asking that if your question is curves. Okay, cost. Thank you so much for your question. Curves is the best thing to do. Fritesh asks, please explain a make video if possible on how to enhance food images so that colors look attractive but not unnatural. I'm asking this for my YouTube thumbnails. I love your channel. Guys, go ahead and check it out. Uh, check out Pritesh Panel, Panel, uh, Palan's channel. Pritesh, if you can leave the link to your channel, if you can name your channel in the live chat, he's my friend. Uh, they have a really, really nice YouTube channel on food. So go ahead and check it out. Check out his channel. So yeah, that's a nice channel. Okay, to do that, answering your question, uh, if you're using Lightroom, you can do this. Okay, let's open up some food photography images. Okay, so I'm using this plugin called Pexels that allows me to search for free stock photos from inside of Photoshop. So go and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and search food. Most of them are already retouched. So maybe. Oh, let's open a nice one. Okay, let's open this one. Okay, guys, I'm deleting deleting the background photo. Okay. Okay, so this has imported the image. I know I don't know why really strangely. So let's delete all of this. 
I don't want Photoshop to act heavy right now. So let's make it a little bigger. There you go. Press enter. Now, to increase the color without making it look unnatural, here's what you can do. Add a vibrance layer. Okay, add a vibrance adjustment layer. Did you just see what I did? Adjustment layer, add a vibrance adjustment layer. Now, just increase the vibrance. Watch. It has increased the color without increasing, without making it unnatural. Now, don't increase the saturation. This makes it unnatural. Saturation is your enemy. Vibrance is the key. Okay, so before, after. Subliminally, it has increased the color, but vibrance is your key. What vibrance does is that it only amplifies the colors of the midtones. Not of the highlights, not of the shadows, just the midtones. Saturation amplifies the color of every pixel, irrespective of it's a dark pixel, it's a white pixel, anything. All right, so let's delete vibrance. Thank you so much for your question. Okay, can I match skin from the same skin? Yes, of course you can. You can have a reference skin. You can take the sample from that reference and use that sample to match it, okay? Also, there's a tutorial about it. Guess what? Check that tutorial out. The name of the tutorial is Match Skin Tone. All right, so let's look at the other comments. How about explaining about filter gallery because it doesn't work on all images like effects like cutout, dry brush, etc. Guys, here's the thing. Uh, thanks, Money, for the question. Here's the thing. Some of the filters does, just doesn't work on smart objects, but some do. Also, there are a couple of fil filters that require a lot and lot of, uh, what do you call it? Graphic intensive processing to be technical. It all, it all means that you need to upgrade your hardware to apply that filter. That's all. All right, so, money. if you can be more specific, I can answer your question better. All right, uh, how about explaining filter gallery? This is done. Okay, okay, what type of Photoshop do you use? Okay, change the color of an object using, he not using hue saturation. Okay, how to change the color of any object? Hitesh, here's the thing. I've created a tutorial about it in which I give five ways to change color. Go ahead and check that out. Okay, that's a very nice tutorial. Um, th these are the things that others say. I'm not saying it's nice, okay? Everyone else, not everyone else, some of them are saying it. Okay, so uh, I wanna do texture from Add Noise and Emboss, I did really, really, please make a detailed video about color grading and color correction. I actually have a tutorial about automatic color correction, do check it out, I will make it, I'll keep your uh, comment into consideration. All right, something like this happens to me, Photoshop, it's mainly covered. Guys, Photoshop questions, Photoshop questions, Photoshop questions. Any Photoshop question, make sure you ask them right now. Okay, thanks for the great live stream and subject. Hey, you're the best. Thank you, Dev. Great to listen to that. Okay. Uh, Rakib, do you have any questions? Great to see you. Okay. Guys, just ask questions because I'm sitting blank right now. Okay, so let's uh, look at a couple of things that, a couple of tips that you might be, that might be useful to you. Okay, Hitesh asks, let's, let's make it a little bigger. Hitesh asks, how to how do you open camera raw filter when you okay when you use photoshop versions before cc and it's not located in filter menu here's the thing i've not used camera raw filter before photoshop cc it was photoshop cc when i got introduced to camera raw filter but you can try opening a raw file in photoshop and let's see whether it opens up in camera raw okay and if it does awesome now there's a camera raw filter, not in filter. I have no idea where else to found it. But here's the thing, that's all I know because uh, I've been introduced to camera raw since I downloaded CC. And before that I used to do everything in Lightroom. So yes, and I think you should still use Lightroom. But here's the thing, you can try, if you get to know, let me know, please. Because anyway, we are not using the old version. But if you get to know, please let me know because a lot of people I know are using CS6, I need to tell them. So when you open a raw image in Photoshop, it opens up in Camera Raw. Keep that in mind. Also, there's an option to open Camera Raw again, I guess, is that uh, uh, when you open the image in Photoshop and it opens up in Camera Raw, press and hold Shift and click Open Image. That way it imports as a smart object and when you click on the smart object, it opens up Camera Raw again with the adjustments that you have done. done. Okay, any tutorial on movie poster designing? Not yet, but I'm planning to do. Guys, uh, do you have any other question? Make sure you ask them right down here. Okay, do you want to know something interesting? Let's learn a little bit about adjustment layers, okay? So, 
we have the same image. Let's change the colors. Let's have something fun. Okay, another question came. We couldn't have something fun. Uh, you can download the script for the camera raw filter. You can download the script. For hey, Magic X, thank you. Help Stu Dito. Stud Dito. PLD. Help him. I use Photoshop CX6, but camera raw isn't there in filters option. It's only option when I open the image. Yes, as I said. That's the way it is. Uh, just watching you, you're so funny. I'm funny? Thank you. I take that as a compliment. Okay, now let's learn about, as some of you asked, how to change colors. Let's quickly do it. Okay, suppose that's not the thing that we want to do with this image, but let's try doing it. So let's change, try changing color of this one, this fries. Okay, so how to change color? Simple. Add an adjustment layer about hue saturation. There you go. Now, Let's take a closer look in the fries. Okay, now, there is a button, which I cannot see right now. There you go. Okay, so let's go to, so what is it color? What the color of this is? Yellow, right? Okay, select yellow, take this eyedropper tool, click on it. There you go. Now. Change the hue to something really strange. Okay, change it. Now, make the selection. This is the fuzziness. Think of this as the fuzziness, the smoothness, the transition between the areas that are being affected and the areas that are not being affected. For now, decrease it. Decrease this also. Make it as small as possible. Now, let's move it. Find a happy place where most of this has gone blue. Now, this is going away. This is going away. Find a middle place. So this is a middle place, and then increase the right hand side till all of it is selected. Increase the left hand side till all of it is selected. There you go. And now let's make it a little smoother. There you go, we have changed the color of this one. And with this one, we have changed the color of everything else. And this is, looks like a stale food. I know, I get it. Okay, this is how you change colors in Photoshop. You can even make it black and white. <laughs> there you go, you can make it black and white. You can even enhance the color to decre increase the taste. You can make it more fried up can increase the lightness. Pritesh, I don't know whether this is gonna be helpful to you, but <laughs> that's the way it is. It looks like a mango right now, but that's okay. Okay, all right, so let's look at the questions. Please explain and make video if possible on how to enhance food images so that they look attractive. Uh, look at the questions. Okay, how you learn your Photoshop and are you a photographer? Yes, I'm a photographer. I learned Photoshop trial and error. That's the way, you, uh, that's the way I learn it. How to get camera raw and filter option. Is there any way there? He just said uh, there's a script to do it. Okay. Guys, I have nine more minutes. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask it really quickly. What do you use first in adjustment layer in photo manipulation? And what is the last? What to use in adjustment layer in photo manipulation and what is the last? All right. So it depends upon what you want to do. Mostly, I go with curves. There was a tutorial about using curves to match composites. That tutorial is in my channel in which I explain that how to use curves to match the color of the composites with that of the background, color of the elements with that of the background. Because in the beginning, it's the color that you want to match, okay? It's the color that you want to, once you make the selection, once you remove it, once you extract it, it's the color that you want to match first, okay? You want to do it? Just let me know if you want to do it, I'll just show you. I have eight more minutes, okay. Thank you, Fritish. Do you have a free site where we can download Photoshop CC 2017? I wish I could answer this question. <laughs> I really wish I could answer this question, but I cannot. What will YouTube do? It will just terminate my channel. Okay, please explain uh, the blending uh, option. What is the use of this layer and the underlying layer option and the upper box options? Okay, you mean the blend ifs, right? All right, let me show you what the blend ifs does. There are, there are a couple of options that, uh, there are a couple of things that the blend ifs do, and it's a lot of fun. So let's open a texture image. So let's open a texture. Let's search for a texture image. There you go, this is the wall. Let's click on it. There you go. Okay, till then, while it's downloading, till then take some other question. For frequency separation, what blending mode did you use in apply image? Uh, linear light. The details for the details layer, I used linear light. Hey. Uh, Craig, once I'm done with the live stream, you can always go back. This is going to be uploaded to my channel. You can always go back and see the exact process of how I did it. Okay. Mm. Okay, good. Okay, thank you for answering my question. It was helpful. 
Great to answer your question. All right, I don't know why the hell it's taking so much time to download the image, but that's okay. Yes, it has downloaded the image. Okay, so let's just tuck it in and let's make it bigger. And I'm speaking like Jim Brown. Okay, now uh, let's take the text tool. Okay, coming to the blend devs, okay? Let's take the text tool and let's write, you are awesome. Let's make it a little bigger. Guys, I'm sweating because I have no fans on right now. And uh, that's the way to record live streams because the audio would be affected. There would be noise. I don't want you guys to face noise, so I've turned off the fan. I don't have ACs, but that's okay. Let's make uh, this make it a little bigger. Yes, guys, to make it bigger from the middle, press and hold Alt and Shift together. And if you're using a Mac, it's Shift and Option. And that way, you make it bigger from the middle. Hit enter, there you go, okay. Um, hi Devojit, great to see you, he's my greatest friend. Where, uh, when are you returning home? I don't know, but I'll, when I, whenever I return home, I'll let you know, we'll meet, okay? So, okay, now this is fine. Now what if I want to match it with the background? That's when blend diffs come in to play. Right click on it, go to blending options. Okay, now when you go to blending options, and you see the blend if stuff, okay? Now, I just wish I could make it, okay, let's move it. There you go, you can see it right now. Okay, now, this is completely white. So we don't want highlights in this. We don't, right? What we want are shadows in this. So, now, what is the reference of shadows? This layer doesn't have any shadows. This layer has shadows, the yellow surface has shadows, so, we'll only affect the sliders, we'll touch the sliders of the underlying layer. Okay, and since we want shadows, since we want the darks to be revealed, we'll take the slider from the left one to the right one. Watch, now it's going, that's, watch this, how the shadows are appearing, watch. Now that's too much, I'll take it a little bit, and to make the transitions a little bit smoother, press an old auto option, click on it, and there you go. Now this makes transitions much more smoother. There you go. Now isn't this looking amazing? So this is how you do it. And there are a couple of options called drop shadow, a lot of effects. So you can try them, it's really easy to do. Click OK, there you go. If you want to know that, please let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so it's looking real-ish, isn't that? Watch, okay. So let's take some more questions. Good night. Photoshop. I'm not Photoshop King again. Thank you, Hitesh. Are you on Facebook, Craig Lance? Yes. I, okay, you're asking Craig Lance. No, all the blending modes in apply image and calculation. Craig, I'll, I'll definitely plan to make a video about it. Okay. Okay. Facebook friends are being made here. Amazing. Also, guys, join me on Facebook. Guys, I have four minutes. If you guys have any question, make sure you ask them right now. Okay. Any question you can ask them right now. Okay, let me talk about the other blend options, blending options, okay? So since you asked, and I have a couple of time, let's talk about the other blending options, the other things that can be fun to do. Okay, so a couple of other things that we use in design are the drop shadows, we use them a lot. For example, instead of this, you're using something like, for example, using a solid color, or maybe a simple layer, Yes, guys, to make the make a vignette really quickly, what you can do, you can fill it with a color. For example, uh, a dark blue color. There you go. A dark blue color like this. And uh, to fill anything with a foreground color, the shortcut is Alt and Backspace. Or Option and back Backspace if you're using a Mac. Take the gradient tool and make sure the radial gradient is selected. Okay? Create a layer above it. Okay? Make sure black-white is the gradient. And try this. This black in the center, we don't want that. We want the opposite. White in the center, black in the edges. So we will check reverse and we would do it. There you go. Now we have the vignette, but the blue color is going away. So here comes the blending options. So we'll change the blending options to screen because screen, sorry, multiply because multiply removes everything that is 100% white. There you go. We have the vignette. Okay. Also, we need to make the text layer visible. There you go. Okay. Now the other blending options that we use are the drop shadows. It's one of the greatest effects to do. Uh, it's most common. So this is the drop shadow. Let's quickly learn it. Check the drop shadow. Let's learn drop shadows today. Okay. Drop shadows. 
What a fantastic thing to learn. Select the drop shadow and uh, select, and now what is the angle? Let's learn it bit by bit. Okay, so let's make it visible to you. Okay, let's make it visible to you. There you go, and let's open it up again. <clears throat> Bro, which laptop is better for using currently updated graphics software? By the way, which one are you using? Guys, I'm using a Dell Vostro, and uh, the laptop, any laptop is good. Just check out the specification. Any laptop which has a good NVIDIA graphics processor, which is above at least two or three GB of dedicated graphics memory is good. And, and you should have at least 16 GB of RAM. Mine has, uh, mine has 8 GB of RAM, DDR3. If you have DDR4, that's amazing. All right, so drop shadows. What is angle? Angle is the angle of light. If light is coming from here, shadow will be here. If light is coming from here, shadow will be here. So that's uh, all the way to do it. So select the location of light, source of light, the direction of light. Opacity is how dark or light the shadow is. And make sure this is multiplied. The shadow, how is the shadow going to fall on the surface? This is how it selects. Don't screen as the opposite. It makes it lighter. It's good for glow stuff, but multiply is the one that we need for shadows. Okay, distance is the distance of the shadow and you can play with it. There we have it, the shadows amazingly. Okay, so, bevel and embosses some other things. Blending options, okay. So that's pretty much it. Guys, if you have any questions, ask me there. I'm just gonna sign off and it's time for me to go right now. It's nine o'clock and time to bed. Good night, Reynaldo, great to have you. Okay, good night, Craig, good night, Cos Gallery, good night, Arsh Khan, good night to Dipto, good night Devojit, good night Meldrum, very good night. And I, I want to say good night specifically to the one who saved me. Native Doll, special good night. Dave Pirot, very good night, good night man. To Dipto, good night. Thanks a lot for your question, you being very engaging. And maybe, who knows, in the next live stream, I might have some gifts and contests. It's going to be amazing, okay? So if you're watching it right now, know that okay good night abd else uh, else alam i'll get back to your question uh and good night sorry if i missed good night mina you're always there you're always there is the first one to start good night everybody bye take care